When actress Grace Kelly became Princess Grace of Monaco, the rejection by European royal houses was almost unanimous. The bullying he tried to combat with money, luxury, and propaganda. Spoiler alert, it didn't work, Grace Kelly's landing in the Principality of Monaco was not the fairy tale that the tabloid press and the movie studio that financed her wedding tried to convince the world of. In the elitist world of royalty, the wedding of an Oscar-winning blonde to an operatic prince of Monaco, a French protectorate with more problems than solutions, impressed no one. Trying to impress the world by arriving in Monaco with 70 suitcases of luggage and a dowry of millions of dollars was undoubtedly much easier for the mother of Caroline Monaco than to win the favoritism of the European nobility. It is well known that our Queen Sophia's mother, Queen Frederica, hated her both in public and in private. But she was not alone in her disdain for the actress, the Grimaldi women themselves, led by Princess Antoinette, had gassed her since the day of her engagement. To win the favor of high places, Grace Kelly developed a strategy based on what she knew best, her image and winning the attention of the press. This marketing campaign began with her first meeting with Rainier, photographed by Paris Match, and was further developed on her wedding day, attended by 2,000 journalists in front of 600 guests, and only two members of the royal family, the Aga Khan and King Farouk of Egypt. A plan that began to bear timid fruit a year after that wedding, in 1957, when for the first time the Monegasque princely House of Grimaldi was received by Elizabeth II, and the princes of Monaco were received on an official visit by the French president. But in exchange for these Pyrrhic victories, Grace Kelly and her entire family ended up being bait for the press. The Unglamorous Glamour of Monaco in the Grace Kelly Era Le Monde newspaper perfectly defined the landing of the American actress in April 1956, the principality was no stranger to spending, 300 million, no doubt hoping that the spending would prove profitable, that it would serve at least to revitalize Monaco and Monte Carlo. It was very fashionable in the era of collars and grand dukes, slightly anachronistic today, in the era of short films and popular tourism. There was not a single royal house in Europe that did not know that Monaco was on the ropes at the time, competing with Nice to win the French Riviera game, and that it was millions from Grace Kelly's healthy current account and her charisma that the short and unattractive Rainier was looking for in a Hollywood actress, not love, as was said with great pomp. In fact, it was not Cary Grant who introduced the couple, as they themselves claimed in the popular press to give their relationship a patina of glamour, but the much darker Aristotle Onassis, who decided to turn the principality into his private playground. To marry her Prince Charming, Grace Kelly lied about almost everything. She claimed to have arrived at her marriage to Rainier as a virgin, being a very religious person, Catholic of course, and in interview after interview made it clear that she didn't mind stopping being an actress because what she really wanted to be was a wife and mother when the reality. The thing is, nothing hurt her as much as giving up her career for her husband, who even banned the screening of her movies in the Principality. The goal was nothing less than to create an image of virtue and selflessness in Landvin clothes so that the nobility of the world could comfortably pose next to her. In this race to put her image in order, anything went. From lecturing at the 1976 Eucharistic Congress alongside Mother Teresa of Calcutta, defender of the Christian family, to being a spokesperson for the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, if you want to know how you can help them, feel free to write to me. My address is in Monaco, he told the press, dot in the absence of invitations to royal events, Princess Grace has tried to turn Monaco into a replica of that splendor. If the British royal family had picnics, she presided over her own international flower arranging competition. If European queens were photographed at the opera, she created a classical dance academy in Monaco that bore her name. If the Scandinavian princes visited each other, Grace Kelly would organize her own exclusive evening under the pretext of developing the Red Cross of Monaco. Grace Kelly and How to Die of Success Their efforts did little or no good when one considers the importance they had on the social life of European Gotha. In fact, the Princess of Monaco as a last-ditch effort to turn the principality into the Estoril-like Estoril of deposed monarchies, but she didn't even succeed. From the Grimaldi Palace, Princess Grace held secret meetings with representatives of the disgraced royal family, such as Princess Soraya, 
who came to visit her when she was disowned by the Shah of Iran and did not know where to settle, or King Farouk of Egypt himself, who came to the principality when he was expelled from the country in which he had reigned. Soraya eventually chose Germany as her place of residence after meeting her former sister-in-law during a stroll along the Monaco waterfront. Farouk's situation was even worse, he decided to anchor his yacht Deo Javant off the coast of Monte Carlo and turn it into a floating casino to compete with the Monegasque Casino and destroy the principality in the process. Even members of the royal family who saw grace with good intentions preferred to do so in secret, as was the case with Queen Victoria Eugenie. Those who bought the story of the Monegasque Princess of the Poor from start to finish were the public, their publicity was 100% effective, but over time this fame became not just a solution but a condemnation. A good example of this was what happened in June 1961 in Dublin. Princess Grace and her husband were attending the opening of the International Music Festival in the Irish city as the Monte Carlo Opera Orchestra was taking part. 20,000 people broke through a police cordon as the princely couple left the Gresham Hotel, where they had just attended a banquet and ball. As a result of the crash, 12 people were hospitalized, and Grace Kelly had a nervous breakdown and burst into tears in public, which is very unroyal. After decades of effort, Grace Kelly has learned a great deal about the world of royalty and power, but she has not been able to fill her diary and photo albums with the images and contacts she dreamed of when she arrived in Monaco. By the time she met Lady D, she had advised the newcomer Windsors, who worried about her failure to get the right outfit and the criticism it brought from her husband, don't worry. It's going to get much worse from here. After all, on the day of Grace Kelly's funeral, her coffin was accompanied by only her most devoted people, all of them losers of the world's royal family, the Aga Khan, Farah Diva and Diana of Wales. The only European royalty who came to say goodbye to her was Queen Beatrix of Holland, and no one knows what she was doing there.